Okay, so the film has been in the news for the past couple of days, especially after it released on uh, Netflix. Uh, but the film has been making news since 2018 after it won the award at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, this afternoon on Sunny Talkies, I'm really, really excited and honored to have the director of the film, Sir uh, Rohina Gera. Welcome to Sunny Talkies, South Africa. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Looking back at how it all started for you, indulge us in all the details as to how this all happened for you. It's, well, I can't indulge with all the details because it's really been a long journey, really. Um, we, but I mean, some, some of the things that are interesting to know, right? The film was, uh, it's a completely independent film. And when we were working on it, it is, it's an Indo-French co-production. So when we were working on it and, you know, completing it in France, uh, we really didn't know what would happen with the film because it's, it's sort of, it's not t a typical festival film, if you know what I mean. Yes. You know, it's a, bit, it's a bit more mainstream. It's a love story. So we didn't know if it would get selected at, at a good festival. And, um, you know, we were really unsure. And then when, uh, when we got selected for Cannes, which was in April uh, 2018, you know, it got a whole lot of energy behind it. And then, you know, it, it, it's, it's traveled and it's been, it released in many countries, as you know. Um, but for me, what was really important was having it reach um, people who understand the story. You know, when it releases in Europe, it's amazing that the film can connect to people who don't know the context. But yeah. when it connects to people who do understand the context, uh, whether it's in, with, within India and South Asia or the diaspora, it, it, it was really important for me, you know. So now with, with releasing on Netflix, accessing, you know, um, uh, uh, South Asia, the US, UK, Australia, South Africa, it's traveling in a way that's, that where, where it really matters to me, you know. Uh, yeah. And now I'm getting feedback because people really get what this means and what it meant to me to, to try to make this film, you know, and why it was so important. Yeah. Now let's talk about you and your journey in the film industry. You started as a screenwriter, okay. uh, you did yeah. a short film, and then as so is your first feature film. How did it all happen for you? Uh, I started, I worked as a screenwriter for many years. So I started in Bombay pounding the pavement looking for work. Um, it wasn't very easy and also my sensibility is quite different uh, as you can see now, you know from uh, mainstream uh, uh, Indian television or mainstream Hindi films. So I did, I did, I did manage to get some work uh, in, in television and in film, but I, I realized over time that it wasn't, um, I, it wasn't my thing. I wasn't good at it because I, w I don't, it's not my kind of cinema, you know? I didn't find, you know, the sort of humor that they wanted, that I, I couldn't write the stuff that you know I, I and i can't second guess so for me i couldn't i couldn't write something saying oh i don't think this is funny but the audience will think this is funny you know because they want something loud i, I can't think like that so i needed to do something that i could connect to it and that made sense to me and over a period and then i started writing and doing my i, I mean i've always been writing so i i, I did a, a script that was not commissioned that i really wanted to make and I thought, okay, this one, who will, who will I ask to direct it? You know, because I was a writer. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know who, I, there was nobody I, would, I wanted to trust with that script, you know, because I liked it so much. I didn't know anybody. And I think that's the reason I became a director is because I never found my director. You know wow. what I mean? Like I never found the person that I would be like, here, you can take this and do some magic with it. And I trust you. I never found that. So I said, okay, you know, maybe I have to make it myself. And so then I started on this journey of trying to figure out how to become a director. Yes. And it wasn't, it wasn't that easy because people don't trust you that easily. You're a writer, what do you know, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, finally I decided to, one or two scripts and, and, and many, many uh, pitches later, um, I decided to make my documentary, you know? Yes. And at that point also I had moved to France and I was, I was really, you know, looking at India from the outside. And I did the, uh, my, the documentary, which was a sort of fun look at uh, urban Indian arranged marriages, uh, which, predates Indian matchmaking by uh, five or seven years, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just the idea of why do people who have traveled the world, who are steeped in Western culture, why would they opt for an arranged marriage, you know? So I did the documentary with, uh, I did that documentary with basically no money. It was just, you know, signing checks from my personal account when I had to pay for things. My yeah. husband helped me out. He was camera, sometimes he was camera and sound. 
and we managed to make it work you know and we got it to into a couple of small festivals we got into mumbai film festival and then it uh, it traveled a bit and then it ended up uh, on netflix uh, for a while it's not there anymore i was just going to ask uh, if we can watch it <laughs> no it's called what's love got to do with it and it's not it's not there right now but anyway long story short really it's a very long winded way of saying then finally i decided to do my own feature yes. and uh, again completely independently you know because it's not a story like if you pitch it people are going to imagine something just from the storyline uh it is very difficult for, to convince people that it can work you know and why can this sort of such why would such a simple film work now, i didn't actually pitch that much mm-hmm. how, how was the transition from being a writer uh to a director it must have been quite a difficult one and and what were some of the challenges for you so you know to be perfectly honest I mean, the, the the documentary was really challenging because i was again i was doing everything myself you know even the edit like it was just i took uh, but when you get to make a feature and you get an amazing crew on board and i was really lucky that i got some amazing people to work with uh it was an amazing it was just uh, a revelation actually because to be able to collaborate with people who are so good at what they do you know when you have a dop like dominique colan who shot the film who's Uh, supportive and kind and there and has a lot of experience to balance my complete lack of experience but was perfectly respectful that this is my vision you know you can just then take your ideas and in and with somebody who has the craft who has this you know the style to be able to lift it you know uh, so for me being able to collaborate like that whether it was i mean whether it was on set whether it was uh you know at the, the edit jack commits is amazing the music you know collaborating with each person just enriches your own experience and having been a writer for so long and working in a room you know and just banging my head against the wall <laughs> um you know this was just amazing to be able to work so collaboratively and have so much fun you know uh so it was actually a a, a really fun transition to be honest now I'm, i hope i get to do it again i'm sure you will and <laughs> i'm sure you will do it very well uh, i guess the team uh, behind you is also the most important um and i like the fact that you've gone with actors as well and uh, people that are relatively unknown i've never heard yeah. of actors before and i'm a avid follower of the film industry uh and having watched them in this film i was like wow where, where is this talent hidden yeah um they you know they're really good actors but they're not known as quote unquote stars you know yeah. and i think that's unfortunate because i think they they really shine mm. you know um and uh for me it was really important to have people who would really embody the characters so even when you know at the script stages i talked to a couple of producers and they said look it's a strong enough script that you you know it's a strong enough role for a woman that you could pitch it to a star like a more known actor than tirutuma shom and i was like yeah but then i wouldn't who would believe the story yeah you know if you had if you had this you, i mean obviously where you remove all the makeup and you they play it very simple and all of that but still an indian audience going into the cinema or watching a film if it's dipika padukone you know it's her you know and then it's just to suspend this belief and i really for me it was really important to feel that this is real that this could be your home that this could be your you know your uncle's home like to have that real sense of that you cannot draw a line between fact and fiction you know that you really feel the truth of it in this film i saw that you know some films you it's fantasy and you play with that and you enjoy that and that's part of it this film was not that fantasy it was really about truth and for me i wanted an actor who could really embody that completely which is not to say stars would not i just felt that tirutuma also with her with her acting prowess and her and her uh, commitment and the way she works i thought she would be the right person you know and same with vivek like it was great to have somebody who would who would really work to get it right certainly and i must commend you for that because i must be honest with bollywood of course in particular an in industry you operating from uh, obviously it's a star driven industry and yeah. uh, of course Completely. Uh, you don't have a known name in your film etc and you you are with the small unknown film like you said independently produced that's just taking the world by storm uh, um, <laughs> it's an amazing achievement and especially with the lockdown uh, i yeah. think this is uh, allowed for the ott platforms and different stories to be told and appreciated well 
it's been a really long journey for the film to be honest like it, you know like you know it was it can it was 2018 and um it traveled the world but to get it to get a release in india was really difficult precisely because indian distributors said you know you don't have a star how can we put your film in the cinema and so finally you know after i was really busy with the all the world releases you know because i had to travel and being a director producer i have a producer as well my husband is also my producer but uh you know i, I needed to be available to be able to do the india release and finally because i didn't get a good distributor on board um we decided to do an independent theatrical release in india yes and that was scheduled for march and then that had to get cancelled because of the pandemic mm-hmm. you know but we had i mean i had a really good marketing and distribution team on board which was headed by you know shiladitya bora who's supporting the film but it was an independent release you know with a tiny budget and we went out there got cancelled we re-released we we finally managed to release in november and then we managed to go to ott now you know yes. so it's been a very long journey and it just so happens that i mean i'm i'm glad that it's happened in this way also because it's nice to have an optimistic film in the middle of the pandemic you know like when everyone's feeling a bit rotten and down and you know um uh, it's just not, i think i i i feel maybe the timing is right in that sense but yeah. the journey of the film is like ott is come right at the end and i'm really happy it's happened that way you know now 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 the main lead uh, of course the lady uh, tilotama shon uh, she definitely uh, has an interesting character let's speak a bit about the character development uh, because she was she's this poor lady coming from a village uh, to live in the city mumbai the city of dreams as they say and she also has her own dreams which she uh, Uh, i like the way uh, that you kept her character positive because it was very easy for you to go in uh, add a negative um, uh, sentiment to her character and etc mm-hmm. you kept it very positive what was the thought behind that well first a couple of things i i don't think she sees herself as a victim yes and i'm saying that because i observe people around me the film comes from you know having lived in india most of my life and um I think that people go about their lives you know it's an extremely patriarchal society it's very hard on, on, on women a lot of women have it really rough but they you don't see them sitting around and complaining about it they nobody's moaning you know they're moving on they're figuring it out they have uh, women friends they laugh they figure their stuff out you know because it's so brutal you can't stop and and mope so i find that really inspiring you know i find it inspiring because i feel like sometimes i can sit around and mope about silly things and you look around you and you're like wait what are you moping about you know um mm-hmm. and i find that that spirit that 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 um that i've observed i wanted to capture that and i also wanted uh, in terms of their love story you know that it's not a, it's not about hierarchy it's not about him patron- him being patronizing it's not about him thinking oh poor thing you know in any way in fact uh, it's not a cinderella story he's not saving her if anything she's saving him Do you know what I mean there's a way in which uh she is the one who's clearer and uh dynamic and driving things you know and that's what makes him fall in love with her because again i wanted to understand what is what does one fall in love with right mm-hmm. how do you how do you show love on screen you know what is it between two people and there has to be something about her that is exciting and interesting enough for this man to look again and be like hey wait you know who is this person you know as a person yes. you know um so. i i i've been to mumbai um many times and i must be honest with you i have a very different perspective after watching <laughs> uh, this film uh, especially from the uh, from the perspective where you actually had the entire apartment as a character in the film as well which yeah. which was very very interesting yeah i i mean it was the use of space was uh, was important to me it was also very challenging um for us for 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 Dominique the uh, DOP the director of photography and me because we were trying to figure out you know the number of times that they come in and go out of this door right how do you keep shooting it without making it boring like how do you shoot it so there was there were challenges but for me it was really the idea of space and how space shifts like the corridor between the kitchen and the bedroom like i feel that there are points where it's sort of emotionally longer or emotionally shorter yes. you know and actually parallel on the production designer we talk and we actually elongated the corridor because that house doesn't look like that at all right we just had an empty white shell and then she added you know added features and extended it and completely transformed it so that you really get the sense of depth of the corridor the distance between them 
but also it's it's what separates them but connects them. You know, there was a lot of uh, the, the 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 terraces. You know, his 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 balcony downstairs and then the terrace at the rooftop. There's a lot of different spaces in and around the house that are uh, that were really important. But also about how people are separated and are together. And at, in its inception, the film was actually about two the two worlds that coexist in one apartment. You know, so the apartment is actually part of the very inception of the film. Amazing. Uh, I noticed that, and I must be honest with you, I absolutely love that. Now, thank you. What made you choose this story? Um, so, I grew up like a lot of people in India with domestic help, you know, mm -hmm. with live in help at home. And I was very close to the woman who raised me. And from, I think, from a very young age, I, I found it odd, disturbing, you know, how we live, because we live with sort of segregation literally in India, right? Like people eat in the kitchen, people cook for you and they make your bed and they do everything for you, but they won't eat and they cannot sit at the table with you. They cannot have a cup of tea with you. And they, do, they won't even, they cannot even use your teacup. They have their own teacups, you know? It's, it's all separate as if there's something, you know, wh why would that be? They're washing your teacups, right? So, so but, so it was disturbing to me in a, in, a, in a way for many years and I didn't know what to do with it because what do you, you know, what are you going to do? This is, this is so embedded um, in, in, uh, in Indian society. It took me many, many years to figure out how to talk about this in a way that could be uh, interesting and not preachy. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be talking down to people telling them what to do because I honestly don't know what to do. I'm part of the system. I've been part of the system. I'm just as guilty as the next person, you know? So I don't have the answer. I just have the, I have the questions, you know? And so over time, as I, you know, and then I did What's Love Got to Do With It, my documentary, uh, which talks about love and the idea of love and how important or not important it is. And I was questioning these ideas of how we choose to love who we love, right? You give yourself permission at a certain point to fall in love sometimes. And uh, I thought, oh, you know, this thing that's been bothering me my whole life, what if I did it as a love story? And then you get to make these two people sort of equal yes. in a completely different way, right? Because in a love story, it doesn't matter what you have in your bank if she doesn't love you back, you know. Um, and I also, and that would force me to make her interesting and dynamic for him to fall in love with her. And it would not be a victim oppressor kind of story. It would not be sort of a direct critique of society. It would just be a story. So that's how it evolved to being a love story, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, are you afraid of comparisons? Because maybe a few people are going to see this movie and say that uh, the lead actress was uh, a servant in the film Monsoon Wedding, etc. Yeah. Are you afraid no, of no, no. comparisons? And how would you deal with no. that? No, no, no. I was, I was really afraid of the fact that she had, you know, played a, played a maid in Monsoon Wedding. Uh, when I pitched the film to her, when I sent her the script, at that point, I was really scared that she would say, what do you, th what do you think? Like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do this again and again, you know, like an actor could feel like you're typecasting them. And that's when I was scared. I was like, oh, I hope she does it. I hope she does it. And uh, she called me and she, she, she had loved the script. So, and she was, she became, immediately became very supportive and was very helpful in trying to help me, you know, find a co-producer in France, helping me in every way she could with whatever, you know, her uh, contacts were based on her previous films. And that was it, you know, for me, that, that was the main concern. After that, I, I'm not afraid of comparisons in any way or form, really, because I haven't made, for me, the film is not derivative. For me, the film comes straight from life. And it has nothing to do with anybody else's film. You know, the only film that I would say, uh, or, or the one film I would say has a very strong influence on me and on this film is In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai which has nothing to do with this context or this world, but it's just, for me, his restraint, his use of music, his exploration of space, color, all those things were very, very uh, inspiring, yeah. you know? But it's not a comparison. That's, for, for me, it's, a, it's an homage, you know? I love, I love the film, I love his work, and uh, it, it, it infiltrates your being, and you, it comes out in a completely different way. So... If somebody compares me to that, I'd be honored. But other than that, I'm not really concerned. I have because I haven't, I haven't drawn on anybody else's work, you know. Who inspires you as a filmmaker? It's people, actually. I'm not, a, I'm not a very like cinema literate filmmaker, you know. 
like I see, I would, like if I see Catherine Bigelow, I'm extremely impressed of the kind of subject matter she takes on. It's amazing, uh, it's challenging, and it's not the typical thing that you would expect from, let's say, a woman filmmaker. Like she totally breaks out of categories. So there's a lot of interesting uh, filmmakers to to watch out for and to learn from. But I am much more inspired by life. Like I talk to you about, you know, Indian women and how I see them, um, or the challenges I see, or the things that are not spoken about. Uh, other things that are not said it's those things that inspire me much more than other people's films I can admire the craft and the and the beauty and the sentiment but I'm not I'm, I'm maybe it's just my lack of uh, literacy like I'm not I didn't go to film school I'm not you know uh, I, I, I don't have this way of you know throwing out names and you know uh, now, being a woman director and a woman filmmaker in the Bollywood industry and in, this, in, in the industry that you are in Mumbai must be quite challenging because it's only of recent that we are seeing uh, good women-centric films. Uh, yeah. and it's been a male-dominant uh, film industry for a very long time. How do you think that the process can be, uh, how can we speed up this process where we see a lot more films for the subject rather than for the lead actor who's a star in your country. How do you think we can ever, do you think we can ever change that? What, what do you mean more forms for this rather than the, you think you're saying be more focused on the, on the story and the film yeah, rather than in, the in films. Yeah. In, in particular, uh, rather than being, women in, I think, I mean, I think it's, uh, it, I think it's the audience who decides that really, mm. you know, if audiences get like, for me, I feel uh, that today the fact that, sir, I don't know how it's doing in South Africa, but in India, it's at number one. It's, yeah. it's a tiny film. We had like no marketing money for the Netflix launch, okay. like zero. Yeah. Like my entire team was done with their work. Okay. You know, we did, the, we did the November theatrical launch again with like, you know, a debut de like you say in French, like two pieces of string. Like we really had very little, and we, we, we know we just did it. And, um, but, but people found the film you know, and people have watched the film and people have recommended the film and that's what's driven it up. You know, that's what's made it rise up to the top of the list. And it's not an original, so it's not getting, you know, a huge promotion that Netflix does when it's, you know, originals and things like that. So I think if as audiences, even more so now, I feel really responsible as an audience person that I'm not going to click on something that I think is, is not good now when I'm on a streaming platform because I don't want to give my vote to something that I think is mediocre. I'm going to select what I, what I watch because every time you select what you watch, you're voting for a type of cinema, you know, because mm -hmm. they're tracking you, they're tracking and it's the algorithm that's working. This is the algorithm, you know, realizing that people are liking the film and pushing it to the top. So in today's world, I feel that the upside of, of, of OTT is the power that it gives to us, right? The audiences and the responsibility. Because there's no human at the other end reading and saying, oh, you know, I'll, I'll let, let me push this. It's, it's, it's very technical. So if you go out there and you vote for, you know, search for films that are interesting and, and watch them or, or play them so that at least they know, put them on your list, I guess. So at least they know that, oh, people are interested in these kinds of films. So that, you know, you, know, you see what I'm saying? They commission more of those. I think that's one way. Um, yeah, and also um, I would say not relying on borrowed wisdom, right? Or... or constantly questioning this, this this kind of easy wisdom that people toss around this works this doesn't work nobody knows what works yes. you know the audience will decide that and you need to believe in what you're doing interesting what would you say that is the soul of any form for that matter is the soul yes of any form what do you think is the main ingredient in making a good film is it the actors is it the story is it the way it's directed what, in your opinion, is the ingredient to make a good film that you will personally watch and the audience as well? So, so I have to preface this by saying I'm a writer. Yeah. So for me, uh, that, that is the most important thing. And I cannot remember right now who said it, but the, the, the line goes something like this, that you can make, um, you cannot make a good film with a bad script. Of course. You know? So you have to have a good script. That's your prerequisite. You can still mess it up. Even you can take a good script and make a bad film. But you absolutely have to have a good screenplay in order to make a good film. It's not a guarantee, but it's, it's really, I think, 
uh, the most for me it's the most important thing amazing what is the one thing that you've learned uh, from this or the best compliment that you've got to say we watched your film and we really loved it or what's something that's really touched your heart and you'd like to share with us about the film um that I've, I've gotten some messages which which are sort of direct messages on twitter that have been really moving but i think those are direct messages because they're private so i don't i wouldn't want to repeat them but you know what's really move, moving is how deeply people are connecting with the film and watching it on a loop like there are people who've written to me to say i've watched the film you know 10 times in a week i've watched the film you know seven times so far i mean the film just released you know and they're people are really connecting and it means something i think what matters is that it deeply means something to people mm -hmm. and they're holding on to the to to all the different aspects you know the fact that she's a widow but she's 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 making her life again people hold on to different aspects uh and i feel really moved that you know we were able to go out on a limb and make something that could have just been watched by nobody like with my family <laughs> you know it could have been a complete failure and uh, not failure but just a complete you know not not gotten not gotten any visibility and today people are watching it over and over again and and finding hope through it you know yeah. and that to me means everything that and maybe it's a tiny tiny step towards actually making some kind of a difference yeah. you know i must be honest with you and i must profess i love the big loud bollywood films and i'm a fan of that but what i really yeah. liked about this film is the connection in terms of it was so real because i've been to india many times and that's exactly what i've experienced the characters were yeah. were so relatable it wasn't like it was something out of fantasy and i think that's what i liked about it and as your film's supposed to say it remains in your heart and your head for many, many uh, yeah. after you've watched it. And I think that's exactly how I felt after I watched the film. And I want to watch it again, just because of the finer points that I might have missed uh, out. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Actually, you know, when you say like, you know, you like the big films and um, what, 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 what I find is, what, what I was trying to do when I was talking about this film before I made it was, you know, this, there's this way in which you either you see your, your, your big mainstream Hindi cinema, right? Which is very glamorous and sort of, and or you have sort of festival films which are very gritty. Yes. Uh, and they are sort of, the, they represent extremes. I mean, Bombay in any case, for instance, is a city of extremes, but it's a city of extremes that rub up against each other. They are not extremes that are, you know, mutually exclusive. And I think, I don't know many films that actually take both these worlds and throw them together, yes. you know? Like, but while me, of course, it's more realistic than, than than a mainstream Hindi film, or you know, uh, it it it's we're we're more in a, in in a world of, of of realistic cinema. But still, I think that there's a there's a part of it that has the 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 for, for me it was sort of heightened reality, you know, and it's because of my 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 work and my years of working in in Hindi cinema, working in mainstream television, that I'm I also. I feel it's important to give people something beautiful and to give people something uh, not escapist, but entertaining on some level, mm. you know. And at the same time, making you think. I must be honest with you, the scene, the scene that stole my, um, that really is stuck in my head, uh, was the one uh, when the main lead walks through his construction site mm. and he sees all these people living. Uh, Nothing had to be said there. It was just the way that was done. I think that to me was, has to be the most amazing scene uh, in, in terms of how it was captured and, and well done to you for that. Without giving thank you. part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you so much. I mean, that was actually the real construction site where we were shooting. Yes. Uh, and we just asked if we could go to the, to the workers section. And we didn't tell anybody what we were doing. And Dominique, who's, ex who's just so talented and so quick on camera, we just took the camera and we went. And wow. nobody, and they, they were kind of looking at us like, what are they doing? You know, the workers, because they just didn't know why there's, there are these eight people walking through the camp. And we, it was just shot like that on the fly. And which is why I think it, it's, it's not staged. It's really natural. And maybe that's why you felt it. You know, you felt that um, there's, 
I, I just it, you know? relate and I was like, wow, this is an amazing, that kind of encapsulated everything for me in terms of the, both the world. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Really Thank you. Okay, um, now, now that the film's done extremely well and uh, you are enjoying talking to us here in South Africa, talking to people around the world and uh, getting a lot of traction around the film, obviously expectations must be quite high from you uh, <laughs> with regards to your next film. Are you thinking of anything or is there anything in the pipeline, any unfulfilled dreams, projects? No, I have, of course, I mean, every screenwriter has, has films that are ready and, and not yet made. But I sort of told myself, you know, when can happen and, you know, actually the whole process of making the film and then at can, I've been answering this question, you know, since people would ask me, journalists would ask me that at can. And I said, I don't know yet because um, I need to, I need to grow from this, you know, so I need to move forward. I've obviously grown from this, but I need to, I need to put that into my work. So I don't want to pick up a ready script that I wrote three years ago because it, it I, I, you know, I've moved on. So right now I am writing. Um, now, I mean, past few days, no, because it's just been crazy. But um, I am writing and uh, now I'm really terrified. I'm so scared because with all these, with, you know, there's so many expectations that people are like, what are you going to do next? And I don't know. And I don't know if it'll be any good, you know. I don't know if what, if what I'm writing is, gonna, is right now is utter rubbish and I'm going to have to throw it out or uh, I don't know. And it's really scary. <laughs> it, it's sort of nerve wracking, you know, it's going to get, and all, all these compliments kind of give you writer's block <laughs> yes. because you just start, you know, <laughs> you just start doubting yourself and panicking. So uh, I'm going to try to tune it all out and start working again soon. I guess you just need to enjoy this period right now where people are appreciating your film. Uh, enjoy the feedback and possibly yeah. after it's all over, go for a break <laughs> and then decide. Come to South Africa. We have some beautiful beaches. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. I'd love to. I've only been once to Johannesburg, but it was very odd and very short. It was just for like the IFA Awards many years ago. Yes, in 2000, um, I, I think 2000, 2003, yeah. Three or oh, something, yeah, it was. Yeah, 2003, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I, have, memory... but I would love to come as a tourist. It's the Twitters, absolutely. Yes, you have to go to Cape Town and all these other places yeah. where a lot of the Bollywood mainstream films are even shot. Uh, quite a few. Yeah. So thank no, you. No, but I want to come on vacation. <laughs> yeah, come on vacation anytime. You're welcome. Uh, thank you so much for chatting to us on Sunny Talkies. Um, maybe just the last message to people um, on Sunny Talkies listening to you and watching this video. Uh, in terms of your film, sir, and why they should watch it. Anything that you'd like to say to them from your side? Um, I actually want to say two things. Yes. The first thing I want to say is uh, from the film, which is really about, uh, I, I would hope, like my hope in making this film was that people can look at people and try to see who they are as opposed to the role that they play in your life in any way, and that can be anybody whether that's your accountant or, you know, that people are complete people. Um, and, to, you know, it's very easy to be disparaging or to be judgmental. And we all have a billion prejudices with every person we look at. So I think just for me, the goal is to try to strip away some of that, at least to be a bit aware that we have them. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing I would say is just like to believe in yourselves. Because look, at, I mean, I'm just in shock that the film has done this on Netflix, you know, that it's doing this well on Netflix. And it's, it's completely a dream and you can, and it can happen, you know, if you, if you hang on to your, your vision and you go for it. So, yeah, I would just want to tell all, like, you know, viewers or young filmmakers or, or entrepreneurs, anybody to just, you know, hang in there. Fantastic. It was such a pleasure chatting to you uh, right here on uh, Sunny Talkies. And uh, we wish you all the best, Sarahina, for your future. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we, we're looking to- Thank you so much, yes. No worries. We're looking forward to some great films. <laughs> Thank you for putting that little bit of pressure right at the end so I can continue with the writer's blog. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.